You're ugly. You're disgusting. I'm going to kill you. Give me $200. I just tell people to get real. I'm not even a psychologist. Hello, gentlemen. You don't know me, but I know you. You both play games with other people for a living. But today, you play a game for your lives. Hey guys, it's Anti-Everything. And today, I'm going to be exposing the dark side of Dr. Phil. Phil McGraw, also known as Dr. Phil, is the highest paid daytime personality and is in the midst of 162 consecutive weeks of being the highest rated syndicated talk show. So by now, you may be wondering, how the hell did he do it? Is it the show's ability to adapt to viewing trends by posting a constant stream of clickbait to their YouTube channel? Are viewers drawn to McGraw's impeccably shiny head like moths to a flame? Boy, if you don't get- But what really sets Dr. Phil apart is his uncanny ability to find the most mentally unstable people in the world and exploit them for views, all in the name of psychology. Please keep in mind that what I'm going to talk about in this video are only allegations, and they should be treated as such. You want a piece of me, bitch? Come on, bitch! Prepare for pain. Hello, I'm Shelley Duvall. Shelley Duvall, best known for her starring role as Wendy in The Shining, appeared on The Dr. Phil Show in 2016 on an episode called From Hollywood Star to Near Isolation. A controversial promo video was released several weeks before the episode aired. From red carpet to near recluse. I loved Robin Williams. I don't think he's dead. Where do you think he is? Shape-shifting. Do you see him? Yes, yes. Will you let me get you to the doctor so you can get checked out? If you so much as attempt to get my moon mole, I'll kill you. Broadcasting a single out of context statement in a 30 second clip is cruel in so many ways. This is a woman who worked with Robin for years, was extremely close to him, and is clearly still grieving his loss. Considering the fact that McGraw has a PhD in clinical psychology, he, of all people, should know that everyone processes grief differently. McGraw could have used this as a teaching moment for his audience, but instead, he used it for views, all at the expense of a mentally ill woman. Actress Mia Farrow and producer Vivian Kubrick banded together in their support for Duval and publicly boycotted the show on social media. Let's not indulge the greedy, predatory instincts of Dr. Phil, Boycott the TV show and leave wonderful Shelley Duvall with her dignity. Dear Dr. Phil, you are putting Shelley Duvall on show while she is suffering from a pitiable state of ill health. Unquestionably, this is purely a form of lurid and exploitive entertainment. It's appallingly cruel. Shelley Duvall was a movie star. Whatever dignity a mere unfortunate creature might have in this world is denied by your displaying her this way. I recoil in complete disgust. I hope others will join me in boycotting your utterly heartless form of entertainment. He was acting the entire fucking time like he was trying to help her rather than completely exploiting this famous actress who's now in like, you know, this mental condition. It's just, it was, it was, I don't, I don't, how do people, how do you still sit down and watch that guy's fucking show? Fuck that guy and everything he's fucking connected to. Jesus, you don't have enough fucking money, you cunt. You don't drag enough fucking penniless people onto your fucking show. You don't have enough honey boo boo people coming on your fucking show. You got to do that. Dr. Phil sent Duvall to a treatment facility in Miami, Florida, where she stayed for three days before deciding to leave and return to her home in Texas. I can't help but think that if McGraw truly wanted to help her, he would have chosen a facility closer to her home to ease the difficult transition of entering back into society. Todd Herzog. Todd, Dr. Phil. Hi, I'm Todd. Survivor winner Todd Herzog appeared on the Dr. Phil show in 2013 to discuss his ongoing struggle with alcoholism. He was so inebriated during filming that he had to be helped onto the stage by Dr. Phil and several other staff members. Nice to meet you. How you feeling, ma'am? Can you walk? Barely. Hmm? I have to have help. All right. Sorry, I'm very... That's all right. 
Brandon, why don't you get over there and take Debbie's spot? Yeah, I'll, I'll go. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm crying because I just can't believe this is happening. So, turn just come turn around. One, okay. two, three. Here we go. What do you guys have? Nine foot shares. <laughs> Fast forward five years later, Herzog finally reveals his side of the story. He claims he was sober when he arrived on set in Los Angeles, but he was left alone with two bottles of vodka and mixers like orange juice and Red Bull. He also claims he was given a Xanax prior to filming to calm his nerves, stating this was a deliberate move to make for better TV. I show up to the studios and I'm sober, I'm hurting a lot and I'm shaking. My dad was there and I went and talked to him in his dressing room and I was completely sober. And then they pull me into my dressing room and there was two liters of vodka and like some Red Bulls and orange juice and stuff like that. You know, being unsupervised by my parents, I drank the entire bottle. Um, and then at some point somebody gave me a Xanax. They said, this will calm your nerves. And so um, I had been drinking and took a Xanax, which I've never taken Xanax before in my life. And I know that can be a deadly combination. So why it was given to me, I don't know. If these allegations are true, Herzog was placed in immediate danger by the producers of the Dr. Phil show. The American Addiction Center states that mixing Xanax and alcohol increases the potential that one will experience hallucinations or delusions or even seizures compared to using either drug alone. While there's no way we can know what really went on behind the scenes, these accusations are deeply troubling. Open the door or I'm going to throw rocks through your windows, you dumb whore. In February of this year, previous Dr. Phil guest Caden Mahaffa sued McGraw and CBS for humiliating her on national TV. She says that Matthew has only been diagnosed with PTSD. She says, I diagnosed Matthew with a new non-specified disorder called homie in the house of mirrors executive syndrome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she appeared on the show with her boyfriend to discuss the abuse that he suffered at the hands of his grandmother and mother. But Dr. Phil flipped the script during filming and focused instead on Mahafa's mental health issues. I feel like I'm being totally attacked. You're representing yourself as a credentialed professional. You said, I am credentialed. I'm an ICU nurse that's retired. I'm an author. I submitted my credentials to the government. They've been accepted. And if you have, then you need to be prepared to defend those. Matthew was sexually abused for a very long time when he was in school. Well, by who? I was sexually abused by a neighbor kid from down the street that visited frequently. If that's true, I really hate that and you should really deal if with that's that. You true, should get some Dr. Phil, he has You don't it's know true. you don't know whether it's true or whether yes, it's not. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Clothes, guitars, drums, fancy dinners, vacation, car payments. I want it all, bitch. <laughs> teenager was featured on the Dr. Phil show after his parents expressed concern about his video game habits and his violent behavior. While it's obvious this boy needs psychological help, he firmly insisted he didn't feel comfortable receiving it on TV. I believe he's old enough to make that decision, considering it could affect his life and future employment opportunities. You enjoy your time in, in LA. So you'll most likely not be willing to go. Correct. And that means if I try to get you to go in the car, what happened? Well, remember what dad tried to get me in the car? He couldn't even get me in the car. I doubt you can as well. Personally, I think I can solve the problem myself. I don't think I need to be on the Dr. Phil show, and I feel that this is a waste of my time. I'm not going. But Dr. Phil didn't take no for an answer. And when that happens and parents agree, then we involve what's called a transporter. Uh, we've just arrived at the family home. Um, we're going to go inside and meet her young man. This is Mike. This is Laura. We're your handlers. Dr. Phil has cordially requested your presence in Hollywood. He would really like to meet you. Our job is to just kind of get to the flight, make sure we catch everything on time, make sure all your needs are met. What questions do you have? I'm good. Can I shake your hand? Sure. My name is Mike again. 
he appears extremely uncomfortable, and rightfully so. I was very nervous this morning when the transport team came because I've always had my doubts about going. There was thought in my head that I um, didn't want to go and I've seen the Dr. Phil show before and I've seen that people do have to come to their house and take them. So I was just going to go with the flow and uh, accept what I needed to do. Missing out on this opportunity is going to be a big mistake and I think Dr. Phil is going to be able to help me out with uh, my problems right now and I'm very excited. While it's entirely possible the teen had a sudden change of heart, his words came across as forced, almost as if they're being scripted by the producers. Okay, I'm high. Why do you need to lie to every woman you encounter and interact with? Many Dr. Phil episodes examine cheating and how it can destroy families. With his signature no-nonsense approach, Dr. Phil convinces the cheater to face the past and turn their life around for the better. Cut to wife Robin. Her gaze reminiscent of Pennywise before eating a child. surgery jokes aside, she claims she's 100% natural, there's information to suggest that McGraw may be far from the perfect husband he portrays himself to be. Debbie Higgins, a highly respected editor, went public about the details of her and McGraw's failed marriage. She claims he was domineering, high-strung, and unfaithful. When I confronted him about his infidelities, he didn't deny these girls and told me it had nothing to do with his feelings toward me, to grow up. That's the way it was in the world. Serious, honey, your coffee's undrinkable. Pretty harsh. Well, so's your coffee. You know, the girls down at the office make better coffee on their hot plates. Well, see you later. But what we know psychologically is that psychological injuries, verbal abuse, mental emotional abuse, can have a much more devastating effect on someone than physical abuse. Unfortunately, Debbie Higgins passed away in 2014 following her battle with cancer. So Dr. Phil is the only one that really knows what happened between them. Send her to the ranch, bitch. Residential treatment facility Turnaround Ranch has been heavily endorsed on the Dr. Phil show for the last 10 years. The programs typically last 100 days, and they claim that therapy, academics, and hard work come together to impart lasting and powerful change in teens. But many past residents have told a very different story. Julia Gordon and daughter Elizabeth Fernie sued Turnaround Ranch in federal court for allegedly subjecting their daughter to torture, hours of stress positions, threats to suffocate her, exposure to animal abuse, and regular public humiliation. According to the 34-page complaint, Gordon claims her daughter was forced to stay in stress positions for hours at a time unable to stretch or rest her body against structures. She was also forced to sleep on a wooden slab, which was extremely painful due to complications from a previous back injury. She wasn't allowed to shower or change her clothes for days, even though they were regularly covered in animal feces. She attended denunciation meetings, where she was told she was making up her anxiety and depression for attention. The staff would order the children to tell her everything they hated about her and the other residents in a form of public shaming. She also claimed she was forced to eat and prepare meat as a vegetarian, threatening to tube feed her if she didn't comply. During her stay, the staff subjected residents to extreme animal abuse, such as throwing live rats into a campfire for fun and neglecting animals in their care, stating dogs were left for days on end without water. Elizabeth wrote a letter to her mom detailing the abuse and saying that she wanted to come home. The staff never sent that letter, instead telling Elizabeth that her parents said she's been telling tales and that she deserved the abuse. Meanwhile, Elizabeth's parents were told that she was very happy in the program and that she actually wanted to stay longer. Upon visiting her halfway through the program, they noticed that her hands were raw and continuously bleeding. She had lost weight and looked exhausted. In December of 2016, 17-year-old Clay Brewer was charged with aggravated murder after brutally slaying staff member Jimmy Wolseley at Turnaround Ranch. 
Police say Brewer attacked the staffers because he wanted to leave, not because of a grudge. The victim's wife filed a lawsuit in 6th District Court. She said that Clay Brewer reportedly woke up feeling heartless on the day of the attack and claimed that Dr. Phil should have never recommended him to the program in the first place. The lawsuit states that the facility broke its policy against admitting residents with a history of suicide attempts and that it isn't geared to deal with minors suffering from serious drug addictions and certainly not minors going through drug withdrawal. Brewer was addicted to prescription pills and had a history of suicide attempts. He attempted to kill himself by drinking bleach in the five days leading up to the attack. Provo Canyon School Dr. Phil also sends teens to a lesser-known troubled teens facility called Provo Canyon School. Former resident Angela Smith shared her thoughts about the program. Dr. Phil is either oblivious to the horrendous acts of emotional and physical torment that goes on behind Provo's closed doors, or he's so cold-hearted that he simply doesn't care about the blatant mistreatment of children. When she arrived, she was immediately strip-searched. She said the teens were forced to shower and use the bathroom without doors, always in the staff's sight. I found out quickly that if I broke the rules, I would be subjected to extreme forms of mental and physical torture. The first day, Angela was given strict guidelines for everything, including making her bed. A few days later, staff found a small wrinkle in Angela's sheet, and the resulting punishment was cruel, to say the least. For that small wrinkle, I was given one week in a 6 by 6 concrete cell known as the investment area which residents quietly referred to as the dungeons. I had to stand in one place for 10 to 12 hours at a time and stare at the concrete wall the entire time without moving. The rooms were cold, damp, very unsanitary, and usually infested with bugs. Even worse was her description of the observation room. Residents would stay in the empty dark room for extended periods of time and denied access to the toilet. Rachel Roberts attended the program in 2002 and claims that the milk they served was so old that it had turned sour and lumpy. She lost 30 pounds while she was there. She also witnessed a staff member smashing a girl's face into the wall, breaking her nose in the process for not following orders. Another girl was apparently put into a coma. Staff told her that if she told anyone, they would do the same thing to her. I think Dr. Phil should be investigated for malpractice for recommending Provo Canyon School to parents on his show. These allegations and the many others I didn't include span back years and I've noticed a pattern. McGraw seems to feel no empathy for his patient's plight and uses serious mental illness as a way to draw traffic to his show, making himself look like a hero in the process. He is constantly name dropping celebrities, which makes him seem vapid and insecure. I've known Taylor for a number of years. Very cool. I've known her mom for a number of years. Tyler's, a, he just lives down the street from me. He, okay. He's nothing, well, there's what, nothing exotic he, about Tyler Perry. He just, he, he just, nothing exotic. He, he's just a nice guy. Tyler Perry is a very good personal friend of mine. He doesn't talk that way. Anytime a guest attempts to stand up for themselves, he dismisses them completely and turns the audience against them. If you, if you think I exploit people, Every time you bring a guest on this show, you exploit them and spread whatever the problems they have to the whole world. You think that's helping them? Yeah, keep telling yourself that. You can go. Uh, you know what? Who do you think you are, huh? Bye. Huh? No, I'm not finished talking to you. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. McGraw loves to remind everyone that he's an expert in the field, but he's not even licensed to practice. Even worse, he endorses and sends teens to treatment facilities that are heavily suspect for abuse. For all of these reasons, I believe he should be thoroughly investigated before he can continue to practice. Celebrities are often put on a pedestal by their fans, and to them, they can do no wrong. We must not forget that celebrities are human beings, and they're capable of making mistakes. It's important that we hold everyone to that standard, no matter how rich or famous they are. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe. I'm anti everything, and this was the dark side of Dr. Phil. Hit or miss. I guess they never miss, huh?
I'm trying to create a virtual reality tool to help people have butt sex.